Hey everyone, Arch Shadow here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Blue Skies. So previously, I did a Bites the Dust, and we have entered a new timeline where I'm trying to romance Yuri. And we had some wacky shenanigans, and Monica seems to be all for shipping MC with Yuri. Okay, so now it's time to share poems. I guess this time I'll go with Yuri who's actually going to talk to me now because she doesn't feel like I don't like her. Quite the contrary this time. Let's see what you've written for today. Is it that bad? Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Surprise! Do you... like it? Daniel! I'm stunned! Are you smitten? Okay, no. Not... not yet. How is it possible that you've already... you're already this skilled at writing? It was but a day ago that I was trying to give you advice, and now you've already seemed to master it. I think you're giving him too much credit, Yuri. Perhaps you're a good teacher. I really took your advice to heart, and tried to compose a great piece with that in mind. Yuri visibly swallows. She coils a slender lock of her hair around her finger, twiddling it nervously. At least this one isn't a lie. Y y you thought of me? No, not like that. Or, well, ah. Sorry, was that weird? Well, as long as you're not having weird dreams about her or whatever. No, I, um, uh, how do I work this? It's fine. Take your time. Cause yeah, baby, you can do it. Take your time. Do it right. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. I just, I'm not used to this sort of thing. Having someone value my opinion like that. I know it might sound foolish. But the fact that I was able to inspire you is incredibly humbling. And I suppose, in a way, it just makes me... really happy. Wait, surely you've shared your writing with others before, right? Yuri shakes her head. And don't call me Shirley. Seriously? You're really talented, so I would have thought you'd... have shown your writing to others. I primarily write for myself. And besides, I highly doubt people would seriously enjoy my writing. Do you really think that? Yuri nods solemnly. You really haven't shared it with anyone else. Not even your close friends. Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. Anyway, changing the subject here, can I look at your poem now? Okay, this is gonna be brand new, since Yuri doesn't think I hate her. Yeah. Yes, of course. I if you really want to see it. Okay, resist. Oh, goodness. A whimsical, tiny... something friend sleeps along my amber bookend. Dreaming about a... Sarguin Day. Oh my- I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry, Yuri. When... When... Slender... Limpos play... Oh my god, I'm... Ah, uh, I can't read it. She beckons me. Her hand extends. Piercing pupils readily rend. Azure channels bend and twist, curiously held above the wists. However, she finds her advances shunned, always keck crackling, always stunned. Never able to draw the lance across my arms, she's never danced. Perhaps it would be for the best if I laid her down to rest, whilst I haven't given in to painful pleading from within. To think it might be smart 
to save the song of fumbling hearts, lest tears make me dizzy fall. It's either tears or... It can't be fears. And answer her violent... Violet... Vi <coughs> violent... Violet... Violent call. Okay, yeah, so this first... This first stanza kind of... Like, for one thing, I don't know... I can't read what the words look like exactly. And two, these are words that I don't think I've ever heard before in my life. So it's almost like... Yeah, I have no idea. Um... I felt a bit guilty after yesterday's argument with Natsuki. I wanted to experiment with my style a bit more. Hopefully it's not too confusing. Well, the first stanza kind of is, but the rest of it makes a lot of sense. Although, possibly the first stanza is needed to set up the... the main idea here, so... In that case, without that first stanza, I have no idea what's going on, exactly. No, no, it's fine. Even if it's a bit more involved than yesterday's, I still like it. I'm noticing a lot more symbolism as well. Yup. I don't want to assume anything, but the tone of this poem... I'm not sure how to describe it. It's a bit solemn and foreboding, even. It, yes! I really wanted to test my abilities in creative expression. I didn't go too far, did I? No, no, it's really good. I just don't know if I'm good enough at this to deduce the meaning. Hmm... If I had to explain it, I'd say it's about a closely guarded secret. I imagine everyone has a little something like that. Something they're forced to keep to themselves for fear of ridicule. Me in high school with anime. Or, ah, no, me in middle school with anime. It's nice to be able to write about that sort of thing every now and then. Oh. Oh. Well then. Okay, I think I might know what she's getting at now. Well, anyways... I... well, I'm pretty sure we will catch on eventually. Let's see, nice to be able to write about that. If it's something you enjoy doing, shouldn't you write about it more? Well, it's not that simple. It, it's something I'm uncomfortable talking about. I'm not sure people would understand. If anyone were to find out about it... Well... I guess as long as it's not hurting anyone, people shouldn't pry. Yeah, I... I don't know about that. Do you think so? Well, if it really is what I think it is, then... Yeah. Uh, sorry, I was just... or I just was thinking of something. It's a good point, though. The best I can do is try to embrace my own weirdness, right? Yep. That's pretty much what I did in high school. It's like, this is me, take it or leave it. Otherwise, I think I'd hate myself. Yeah. So, at least in middle school, it's like I felt miserable trying so hard to fit in with everyone. Mostly because, well, I wanted to fit in, and so that way people would like me and whatever, but... I felt so damn miserable until I realized, hey, you know what? I don't like what most of these people are saying and doing anyway, so I should just be who I am, and likewise, as long as I'm not hurting anyone, I should be okay to express myself however I should be. Quickly tying that back in with the, the point I was trying to make in one of the Natsuki videos, about basically just being true to who you are and not letting anyone 
force you so much to change, especially if you don't want to. I mean, of course, you can change if you'd like to, but I mean, that's if you only want to. Like, uh, how am I trying to say it? Like, that desire for change comes from your own heart, because you want to. Not because someone else is telling you to, or like you're feeling forced that you have to just be who you are. And if at all times possible, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And that's pretty much what I learned in high school, because at least more people actually accepted me for who I was when I was being myself compared to trying so damn hard to fit in with everyone else. I just... I was myself, and the fitting in just eventually sort of just happened. So... All in all, all's well that ends well. Sorry to keep you so long. No problem, I think I've been keeping everyone else even longer though with my ruminations and ramblings. Thank you for allowing me to ramble. Thank you for allowing me to ramble. Although to be fair, you're at my mercy. The prog er, the story can't continue until I click on the screen. There aren't many people in this world like you, Daniel. And IRL. That's what a lot of people tell me as well, like I'm a very unique individual, so there is that. When I share my writing with you, I feel like you genuinely care about what I have to say. I it's nice having someone who listens. Th th that might be a bit much to say, wouldn't it? Careful, you're gonna make him blush. It's just, I'm not really used to it. I rarely feel comfortable about my writing, let alone with the idea of sharing it. But with you, it just feels so easy. It's easy like Sunday morning. It's nice. Thank you for helping me, helping me with that, Daniel. It's... it's nothing, really. Yuri shows me a genuine smile. So happy. A newfound sense of self-confidence seems to sparkle behind her eyes, if only for just a moment. And that's that. Okay, Natsuki. You probably hate me now. Well, it's better than your last one. But I still don't like it. It's a little too fancy for me. I don't like it. It's trying too hard to be serious. Why so serious? Huh? What do you mean? I don't get it. Poems don't need cryptic and deep sound. Er. Okay, well. Poems don't need to be cryptic and deep sounding to be good. Yeah, that sentence just didn't make sense to me. It'll just sound super dumb if you don't suck at it. Honestly, don't try to write like this until you're on Yuri's level. Oops! Natsuki pauses as if she just realized something. Oh, don't tell me. You're... You're just writing this to impress Yuri, aren't you? You're half right. What? No! I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm just writing. I'm literally just clicking on a bunch of random words in a word bank. Honest. I can show you. Yeah, writing exactly how Yuri would write. She would love crap like this. This... You know what? No. Well, she already did love it. Nowski shoves my poem back at me. Keep your trash. I don't want to do this with you anymore. If you wrote a poem for someone else, don't show it to me. I have to see what she would say if I wrote a poem for Sayori, then. Because technically then I'd also be writing it for someone else. Again. Well, 
That just happened. I guess this was destined to happen. I never really understood what Natsuki tries to get out of me. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's like just... It's like I went through four timelines with her, so... Yeah. Hopefully Yuri doesn't frustrate me as much. I love Natsuki enough, but... This... The blue skies Natsuki just seems a little bit too frustrating to me for various reasons. That I'm not going to go into, because... I've at least talked about it in three other videos enough. At least she wasn't the girl I was trying to impress. Ugh, so you admit it! <laughs> it's like, I'm not trying to impress anyone! Well, at least she's not the girl I was trying to impress. It's like, what is this? Okay, well... Next up, Sayori. Ooh! Ludicrous speed! Okay, now we need a little bit of Monica in my life. Hi again, Daniel! Hi, Ludicrous Speed! Ah. Okay, well, I guess she didn't really have anything to say about Yuri. Oh well. Yeah, it is disheartening, which is kind of why I slowly started losing motivation to continue my writing. But, yeah, who knows, maybe I just haven't found the right people to... the right audience, sort of, to keep encouraging me the way I would like to hope. Yeah, it definitely is more helpful, getting real criticism and feedback rather than just empty words. You, me, and empty words. I guess I've really hit the mother load with the literature club. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Sailor Moon says. Okay, well anyways. Okay, so Natsuki approach is still not meeting eyes with Yuri. Well, to be fair, it's like, they can't meet eye to eye. They won't listen to each other's hearts. And damn, I wish I could remember that song. I was listening to it some time back, and... Anyways, is she still angry with Yuri? Yep, she's the one who will keep a grudge for, like, forever. It wouldn't be out of character for her to be... Although, judging by Monica and Sayori's anxious expressions, I feel like something else is amiss. Um... Ludicrous speed? Okay, here's the festival! Okay, so it's time for- or, well, it's almost time for public humiliation. Natsuki? Yuri? I imagine you were both a little apprehensive when Daniel joined, right? After all, he was an unfamiliar face. She smiles warmly at me. Oh, she's not doing the pose this time, so... Well, whatever. Stupid sexy Monica! But look, he's integrating really well. He's made the effort to get to know us and our individual writing styles. <laughs> she probably has a few words for that. She turns to Yuri. And Yuri, remember at the start when you asked for a book recommendation? Or, ah. And Yuri, remember at the start when he asked you for a book recommendation? Yuri nods, and Monica shoots her annoying smile. I'm about to matchmake these guys like... Or, I'm about to ship these guys like FedEx. Must have been lovely being able to share a book you're so passionate about with a new person, right? Yes, it was enjoyable discussing it with you, Daniel. Yeah, likewise. It wasn't something I'd normally read, so without you, it would have gone by unnoticed by me. 
See, guys? Maybe we'll find more people like that who are just into... who are just as into horror, Yuri. Alright. Because in the other timeline, she was like... You... Like, for Natsuki, like, you found someone else who's into manga. Who knows, maybe there'll be other manga lovers, too. But we'll never know. More like-minded people. Now, come on, tell me that isn't an appealing idea. Yes, of course. But really, my biggest issue is with the actual performance aspect of the festival. Because then it's going to be public humiliation. Well, like I said, I know it's a scary thought, performing in front of a bunch of strangers. We're going to be performing for the peanut gallery. But trust me when I say, I have full faith in all of you. Or, in you. All, in all of you. Your poems are amazing, guys. I just know people will love them. Anyone who's not the peanut gallery. It's almost criminal not to show them off. <laughs> So what do you think, guys? I think it's time for ludicrous speed. Oh, here we go. Let's see. You can do it, Yuri. It's it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. And huh? Well, who knows? Maybe that was slightly different. I don't know. Stop looking at me! Oh, I saw stupid sexy Monica for a split second. Okay, lost in thought. I don't even notice how quiet Sayori's being until we're almost back at home. You are the ocean's gray waves. And... Ludicrous speed. Okay, let's see here. See anything specific on your mind? Hmm, not really. Sorry, did you want to talk? I mean, we don't have to talk if you're thinking about stuff. No, no, it's nice talking to you. Um, I was just thinking about something from earlier. It's nice that we, uh, never mind, it's nothing. <laughs> you're sounding a little like Yuri right now. <laughs> it's like, why didn't it. It's like, this is new dialogue. Oh, well. Uh-huh? Oh, yeah. Well, I guess I just have a question for you, Daniel. What's up? Yuri clears her throat... Er, oh, God. <laughs> Sayori clears her throat before speaking. Well, I guess we all know who's on my mind right now. So, let's just say that one day Yuri asks to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> Well... Okay, well... I'm gonna go with the walk home with Yuri option, because... Obvious reasons. Walking home with Yuri, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart d go doki-doki? I mean... Given how hard it is for her to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so... Exactly. Especially like on Tumblr when I saw someone playing... It was either Pokemon Heart Gold or Soul Silver. Like when they defeated Jasmine and she's like... Offering to give you her phone number for your Pokegear and they said no. And then she's like, oh, okay, I understand. And I saw that and I'm like, in the back of my mind, like... What the hell is wrong with you? Why would you do that to her? She's so sweet and loving and... Okay, well... Uh, anyways... <laughs> yeah, I guess... As a quick side note... As a little kid, I kind of had a crush on Jasmine. So... Yeah. <laughs> so I guess that's why it's like I feel like... If you're disrespecting my senpai, then... You got a problem with me as well. Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Uh, you admitted it. Jeez. Yare yare dase. 
there's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. Don't you think that maybe she'd be more fun to walk home with? No! Stop it! I do not like it when you start putting yourself down like this. I frown. Where did this come from? Yeah, where did this come from? What? I mean, it could be interesting, I guess. But even if I did walk with her, it's not like she'd be replacing you or anything. Because there's only one Sayori in the world. Well, if we ignore the... all the mods that... Well, all the mods and videos that people have played, and then the videos that I'm pl <laughs> that I have of the mods I'm playing, and all the Sayoris from those different timelines. Okay, well, I'm not helping here, am I? Well, there's only one Sayori period. Just ignore all the other stuff I said. Everyone is different. Yeah, like there's Pyrrhus mod Natsuki, and then Blue Skies Natsuki. Okay, well. <laughs> Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Because there will never be another Sayori in this timeline. Hmm. If you say so. You didn't even notice. The conversation trails off, and I'm left feeling awkward. I wonder how long I could keep doing that. Well... I won't, because I'm pretty sure it'll get annoying. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. It's a trap! I can't just lie to her. But if there's some, but if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. <laughs> like that'll ever happen. Cause somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. And yeah, I realized that I was mispronouncing disoriented. I think mostly because for the longest time I just remember that quote the I'm scared and disoriented. Disorientated. I heard it as disorientated and I was a lot more... I was a lot younger back then, so it kind of stuck with me. Because I always thought it was kind of funny. But, yes, I know. It's like, I'm going to set the record straight. I know it's disoriented. Although disorientated sounds like it could kind of be a word. Explode? Massacre. The marriage massacre of death. And there was some vanilla there. Okay, yeah, here we have two of Sayori's words here, as well as childhood. Okay, good. Oh, ah! Well, let's hope I don't... Wait. Uh, um... Hold on, let me just see here. Oh my... I can save Scum the poem if I really wanted to now. <laughs> oh my god, that's kind of... Could you have done that in the original game as well? Oh wait. Ah. For some reason I think that's a Sayori word. Incongruent. Heaven sent. Chocolate! I am in misery. Okay, well, I guess, take note, Sayori is a big fan of Maroon 5. And Nickelback. My god, I don't... Uh...
Oh, hopefully I did this right. Okay, that's another Sayori word. Ah, jeez. Who knows, maybe I am gonna have to... Okay, well, let's reload the save! Alright. So we have here... After image of a crimson eye. Agonizing. Frightening. It was so frightening! Uh... Jeez, well. Well, like I said, I can save scum this poem section, so if I really wanted to. Hopefully, I have better luck this go around. Desire, eh? Contamination. Universe. Abstract. Intellectual. And... Uncontrollable. It's like, okay, well, I would like to hope that this went a lot better. Okay, well, ludicrous speed! Okay, so... We just had our first go around with going to Monica saying, Hey, you know, something's up with Sayori. I'm kind of worried. Okay, anyways. For some reason, I can't shake the feeling that I'm being watched. I'm always feeling like somebody's watching me. I got no privacy. Oh, oh. I glance around the room. I wonder who's watching me now. Suddenly, I notice that Yuri's peering over her book at me. Realizing that she's, that she's staring, she timidly hides behind her book. You didn't see anything! Did she overhear the stuff about Sayori? Perhaps she can help, because she's a very intellectual woman. I walk over to where Yuri's sitting and slide into the desk next to her. Uh, I I'm sorry if I was distracting you. I didn't mean to stare at you like that. Then how did you mean to stare at me? Okay, no. Yuri, it's okay. You're not bothering me at all. She sighs, appearing somewhat relieved. I see. Well, I couldn't help but notice you were deep in thought. I was lost in thought, thinking about the ocean's gray waves, destined to seek something. Is there something on your mind, Daniel? Well, yes, actually, but how could you tell? I can read you like a book. Um... She gently flicks a page in her book, back and forth, rubbing her thumb gingerly across the corners. I'm usually alone with my thoughts, so I know what to look for. Ah. So, she pretty much knows the telltale signs to analyzing people who are lost in thought. Because she does it herself. Interesting. Uh, not that I was specifically watching you or anything. No, I wasn't staring at you. Oh dear. I hope you don't think that's weird of me. Don't worry about it. I think being so perceptive... Uh, I think being so perceptive is kind of cool. Perhaps you could help me with something, Yuri. Her curiosity peaked. She folds the page she was reading slightly to mark it for later, then shuts the book and turns to me. Uh, are you sure I'm the right person for that? I do. Especially, well, Monica's off doing whatever, and, well, Sayori is the root of the concern, and Natsuki wants to probably stare at me with heat vision and watch me die if she had heat vision. I do. You seem to have your head on right. 
So, you'll probably give me great advice. This is an Act 2, Yuri, from the original timeline, so... Yes. I see. Well, I I'll do my best, I suppose. Okay. I guess the main issue is actually... Have you noticed anything up with Sayori? Sayori? You're thinking about another woman? No, it's not like that! She glances over to Sayori, who's totally oblivious to what's happening around her. Yeah, things just seem really different, you know. Like, she's not herself. I tried to ask her about it, but she just told me she was tired. But I'm not so sure. Okay, well, I think Noski said to kind of, like... Like, don't worry too much about it, and if it was, like, anything really major, that Sayori would actually go and tell you about it. What do you say, Yuri? Hmm... Yuri idly taps at her book with her fingers, apparently thinking things over. That must be quite worrying for you. I'm sorry to hear she's not feeling well. Forgive me if this isn't an appropriate question, but do you mind asking... Do you... Or, do you mind me asking how long you've known each other? Gosh, as long as I can remember, really. We hung out a lot as kids, but as we got older, we kind of drifted apart. Since I've been coming to the club, though, I've had the opportunity to spend a bit more time with her. Yuri nods contemplatively. Okay, well, perhaps she doesn't feel comfortable sharing what's ailing her. Uh, that's not to say she doesn't think of you as a good friend. Y you just, um, haven't really seen much of each other recently, have you? Uh, forgive me if that sounds too harsh. I place my hand on Yuri's shoulder. She tenses up for a split second, but quickly eases down again. Oh my god, he's touching my shoulder! Yuri, trust me, if you were bothering me, I tell you, you need to stop apologizing so much. It's really okay. Everything's okay. Uh, sorry, I mean... I let out a soft laugh. She's very sincere. It's quite endearing. I understand where you're coming from, though. I understand what you're feeling right now! Perhaps I'll need to work my way up to that level of connection with her again. Yuri folds her arms and tilts her head to the side, allowing her long, violet hair to droop down over her desk. Daniel, have you ever heard of the proverb about our three masks? Ah, yes. The one that we show to the public, the one that we show with only our inner circle, and the one that no one else sees, as it is our true selves, that we do not want anyone else to know about. Yeah, well, it's like, I just remember that from the original game because I found that really fascinating. And it's kind of true, in a way. Huh? I don't think I have. Well, to put it simply, every person has three different faces. Not like a Quintesson, mind you, but... It's a figurative way of looking at things. The first is how we present ourselves to people in public. Strangers, passerby, that sort of thing. Yep. The second is how we present ourselves to our close friends and family. The ones we hold dear to our hearts. Yes. And the last is reserved only for oneself. It's our truest representation of our being that no one else can possibly interpret. That's actually pretty amazing. Yuri seems to really know what she's talking about. She sure does. And yeah, it's like, in fact, I found it so fascinating that I remember that all these years later. Notice that I said how we present ourselves, not how we feel. So basically, yeah, like, you don't wear your heart on your sleeve. You know, you don't let your... Like, if you're feeling super sad, you just try to go through the day without looking overly sad. Because you don't want people to look at you and be like, Huh? Ah. I think perhaps that Sayori acts... 
the way Sayori acts and the way she feels aren't necessarily the same. They contradict one another. I think I understand, but what makes you bring that up? You felt as though something wasn't right from the beginning, correct? Maybe your intuition is trying to guide you towards that conclusion on its own. Of course, that's just my perspective. It's entirely possible that I'm looking too much into it. Although I must admit, I am curious about her seemingly sudden attitude shift. I wonder what could have caused that. I assume you don't know any of the potential events that could have had an impact on her life, do you? Nothing comes to mind. As you said earlier, I'm not sure if she'd tell me anyway. She turns to face me, wearing a plaintive smile. I understand this might be quite frustrating for you, Daniel. You want to help her, but she won't let you. But sometimes, there's only so much you can do. For now, your best bet would be to simply let her know you're there for her without prying. Okay, this is... It's a little more direct, since... Well, Natsuki was pretty much like... Basically just saying, like, if there's anything wrong, she'll come to you. Versus here, she's... Kind of saying, like, well... To establish that you are there for her, make sure that bridge isn't burned, and, and establish, like, hey, I mean... I'm there for you. I'm not leaving you. That way, she can rely on you. I'm sure she would open up to you when she feels comfortable doing so. She's lucky to have such a thoughtful person looking out for her. Friends like that are quite hard to come by these days. Monica said something similar to me just now. I rub the back of my neck in embarrassment. You guys give me too much credit. I said the same thing. I'm just doing what any friend would do, right? Well, there's friends, and then there's friends. A good friend would do that, but then you have friends who are only artificially there for you on the surface so long as it is comfortable for them, or convenient for them. In other words, like, those kinds of people, you... you try to be a good friend to them, and... like, you'll do anything for them when they need you, but when you need them, it's like, where are they? You know? Those are the kinds of people, like, well, I guess they are kind of toxic, and yeah, you don't want to put up with that. So it's almost like, how do you weed out, like, true friends from these fake friends, as my mom would have put it? There's nothing extraordinary about what I'm doing for Sayori. Hoo <laughs> so humble. Anyway, do you mind if we do some reading? I can't do anything else for Sayori so I might as well take my mind off it. Of course. Of course. That's the Yuri version. I thought we could carry on with the portrait of Markov. If that's okay with you, that is. Yeah, sure, that'll do fine. But before we get into it, I just wanted to say thanks. For listening to me, I mean. You've been super supportive, even though this stuff doesn't really have anything to do with you. She's just a genuinely nice person. So, uh... I really appreciate it. You're a genuine person, Yuri. Yes! That's the word I'm looking for. She's a genuine and sincere person. She's also very humble and down-to-earth. Not to mention... You've got a cool taste in literature. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, sorry. It's just that you're really mature and insightful for someone like me who isn't very good with emotions and who is very dense and oblivious. You really hit the nail on the head. Uh, sorry, I'm just not used... I'm just not really used to people being so nice. Man, 
It almost makes me think back to the Pierce mod. Pierce mod Yuri was actually like bullied. So I don't know. I frown. That's kind of surprising. Sure, she's a little quiet, but she's really got her heart in the right place. Ah, uh, it's okay. I should have been a bit more mindful. Shall we start reading? If you wouldn't mind. Thank you, though. I'm glad you joined the club, by the way. Okay. And I guess nothing important happened. Okay. Let us go back to our favorite girl. Daniel? Yuri? It amazes me every time you show me a new composition. Well, at least, at least you didn't say the secret word, even though you kind of did. Your poetry is phenomenal. I can't fathom how you're able to write this so naturally. Well, to be fair, I did have to go back in time a little bit to fix the poem. The words flow through the page with vigor. It, it even makes me feel somewhat jealous. Really? Oh god, no, don't be jealous, because jealousy made my life a living hell in another dimension, or timeline. Okay, yeah, I'm going to be interchanging between dimension and timeline a lot. My apologies in advance. It seems so easy for you, whereas I find myself stressing about each piece. Yuri, I don't think that's entirely accurate. I only do what I can depending on what the word bank gives me. And sometimes it doesn't work, but sometimes it does. In this case, it did. I don't have any innate talent for writing. That's right. You have an innate talent for picking words from a word bank that sound good. Well, actually, that's me. But I do know an incredibly skilled writer whose work motivates me to do my best. Do you want to know who it is? This girl! <laughs> <clears throat> Man. And that's you, Yuri. Oh. Are we gonna have a meltdown here? Uh, my goodness! She's handling this a lot better than I thought she'd be. Yuri gently smiles to herself, closing her eyes. This feeling... I had no idea that sharing my poetry would feel like this. It's... So freeing. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. I still can't believe you've never shared your writing before now. I think so many people would love to see your work. Y you say that, but... I'm not sure it's that simple. Huh? How so? Well... Yuri looks out of the window wistfully. Oh boy. Tragic backstory time. Daniel, do you know what I do in the afternoons? No, I do not. I like to find a quiet spot to eat lunch by myself. <sighs> yep. That's pretty much how I spent most of high school. And nearly all of middle school. Especially once my friends thought that... I wasn't cool enough to sit with them anymore. Like, I would try to sit down and they'd be like, Go away, Daniel! So... <laughs> ay, ay, ay. It's almost like, Ah, yes. It's all coming back to me now. All the sadness and feelings of loneliness I had. It's a wonderful time to reflect on things without distraction. I suppose so. In fact, I'm also able to catch up on my reading. Do you know why I enjoy reading so much, Daniel? I do not. Well, I have an idea, but I want to see what you say. There are so many amazing types of people within the pages. People who might infatuate you. Yep, fictional characters can do that to you. It's almost like, I don't blame... Well... Yeah, what am I... 
What am I trying to say? I blame video games and anime for my taste in women. <laughs> I don't know. Or perhaps someone who can make you smile in your darkest moments. Or someone who you can relate to on a personal level in such a way that it almost makes you feel makes it feel like you're connected in some way. It might sound pathetic, but it makes me feel better about my solitude. It's almost as if I have my own group of friends. I is that weird? I don't have to worry about disappointing them. Or you don't have to worry about them rejecting you. Like I said, I know this feeling all too well. Because I spent a good chunk of my life going through that. They don't find joy in deriding me. And they don't hate me for acting so insufferably pretentious. Yuri, do people really say those things about you? People might think I'm haughty, or that I'm a know-it-all. Like Natsuki does. But in actuality, I know nothing useful about the world. <clears throat> Man. I guess, well, kind of doing the Yuri voice, I guess that kind of wears on my throat a little bit. I might be able to tell you what defines a Shakespearean sonnet. But I'm totally lost when it comes to socializing. Ah, yes. I can tell you so many things about the Bionicle lore and most of the Star Wars lore. But ask me to socialize and it's like, um, what do I do? How do I do English to speak good? I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings. And all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that it became apparent that something was missing. You. This already sounds like a like a, a love story right here. Like just a small town girl living in a lonely world. No friends. And just the loneliness eating away at her. Then there was you. Me? Are you sure? Yes. The fact that you're willing to be patient with me it really means a lot to me. I know there's so many things wrong with me, Daniel. Yep, I kind of feel the same way about myself in some ways. My diction is irritatingly, irritatingly slow. I'm never able to find confidence in my own opinions. And I look for hidden depths where they don't exist. A part of this is me as well. And even now, it's like, I look for hidden depths between, like, the words and whatever. But I kind of blame my English classes for that. Especially my ninth grade English class. She would always... That teacher would always, like, try to make us find symbolism in everything. Like, a, one of the girls in our class even joked, like... She could have given us a poem about a chair. Like, a literal chair and ask us to find the symbolism of what the poem is about. Even though it's about a chair. So, yeah, in a sense, it's like, I kind of do that as well a little bit. And, yeah, it's like, I find trouble finding, like, confidence in some of my own opinions, especially because of fear of backlash. So it's like, it's almost ironic that I'm even, like, how I've shared so much of my own opinions throughout these Doki Doki Blue Sky videos. But despite all of that, you didn't leave me. Yeah. Because I've had a lot of people leave out of my life. Just because they couldn't really deal with me anymore. Daniel, I can count on one hand the number of people I feel comfortable talking to. Oh, damn.
you're one of those people. A and um, I'm so grateful for that. I see. Don't you have anything else to say to that? Well, I guess to be fair, if someone had just told me all that, I wouldn't know what to really say at first. Well, in my eyes, you're an incredible person. Oh, here we go, Mr. Smooth Operator. It'd be weird if I didn't treat you nicely, you know. I joined this club hoping to meet some new people. And I'm glad I got to meet you. Um... Yes. I'm glad th that I got to meet you, too. Yuri hides her face in her hands. Okay, well, there's no sprites for her doing that, so I'll give you a pass. At least her face is kind of hidden by her hair and her blushing. However, I notice she is smiling this time. Do you want to show me your poem? Yes. Yes, I do. She said it to me. Okay, no. Let me get it for you. Heartbeat. Pounding eyes. Exasperation. Flowing liquid. Con... Conflag... Conflagation. Rhythmic pulse of candid blush. Delicate notes. Thoughts that rush. A considerable quail. Quietly quelled. Sleepy ribbons of bliss expelled. Carefully beats are wild and flimsy. Patched on broken. Patch or broken on ultimate whimsy. Nebulous trails of dainty tracks. Final thoughts, no turning back. Irrepressible. Fervent drive to breathe. See, they're fur. Feverant. Or feverit. Feverit. Fervent. I don't know. Kindness calmed. That will never leave. Exalted glow of fluorescent moss. Grateful steps of love on moss. Happy thoughts on or hidden grief. No! A curious, a curiously cut crimson leaf. Okay, yes. Now I think this is talking about what I was thinking of. A cut crimson? If you know the original game, you know what I'm getting at. Thrashing thread of an untamed gaze. Cacophonous chaos of hearts ablaze, sparkling sounds of silent desire, from strawberry rhythms that never tire. So essentially, by doing this that I'm thinking of, she gets kind of like an emotional high off of that. Hence the speeding up heartbeat and pulse and all that. These rushing thoughts. All because she's doing this to get on um, something of an emotional high. But anyways, we'll see, most likely. At least, I feel like there's no way this game can touch on Yuri's character without mentioning that. Finishing the poem, I start to hand it back to Yuri. But instead of taking it from me, she looks away. Oh. I... I didn't do anything wrong, d did I? Uh, no, of course not. I just... don't really know how I should respond. Despite Yuri's poem... poems usually being cryptic, it wasn't hard to figure out what this one was about. Yeah, I think... Well, let's see what you say first. I already said what I thought. Maybe it's hypocritical of me, but I'm not sure if I can explain this one. Don't worry. The meaning is pretty clear to me. Yuri is having an even harder time speaking than usual. You must have put a lot of thought into this one, huh? 
Yuri nods. Well, I'm really happy that you showed me this poem. So, thank you. And I hope we keep spending time together. I hope so, too. A small smile plays across Yuri's lips. I once again try to hand the poem back to her, but instead Yuri gently takes my hands and pushes them back toward me. I hesitate in response to her warm touch. Well, looks like you're not going to have anything to share with anyone else. You can... Or... If she was like Natsuki and she wrote another poem. Like, this is the real poem I want you to read. And this is the dummy poem that I want everyone else but you to read. You can... Um... The poem is... Once again, Yuri fails to form a complete sentence. You mean I can keep it? Yuri nods. I'd love to. Or, I'd love to. Yuri smiles again. There's something so pure about it. You always... You always know what to say, Daniel. Uh... Well, part of the time I'm helping him, and part of the time... He does things that just frustrate me, but whatever. Perhaps someday... I can make you feel good, too. Ugh. Uh. No. No! <laughs> uh. Thank you, Tumblr. Yeah. I'd like that. Yuri finally turns back towards me. Or back... Back... Ah. Yuri finally turns back toward me. We should probably think about sharing with the others. Huh? Oh, right, the other three. But uh, I'll see you later, won't I? And I'll see you later in my dreams. Okay, no. <laughs> Where did that even come from? Yeah. Kind of like the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Like, girl, you must be tired because you've been running through my mind all day. I promise, Yuri. With that, Yuri pivots around on her heel, making her way back to her desk. Okay, and let's see, this'll be easy. I don't like you. Yeah, no thanks. Wait, what? You didn't even... Next! Thank you, next. See? Like I said, easy! Okay, I don't know. There's probably gonna not gonna be any nuances here. Oh! Oh! Okay, here we go. Finally. Let's see, I'm fully aware that she didn't nap at all, and the fact she went along with the lie can f further confirms my suspicions. <coughs> I open my mouth to call her out on it, but then I stop, remembering Yuri's words. Perhaps... Now just isn't the best time to ask about whatever's on her mind. It's not like we're best friends nowadays. There's clearly some distance between us, as much as I don't want to admit it. I've asked her what's wrong, but she didn't really confide in me. It's frustrating, but as Yuri said, all I can do is let her know I'm there for her and respect her boundaries. So basically not to overstep your welcome and like, pry and her privacy where you shouldn't be, so to say. Sometimes you have to just work hard with the hand you've been dealt, I guess. Yep. Work with the hand you've been dealt, and then let the chips fall wherever they may fall. And... okay, and he is letting her know, like, I'm there for you no matter what's going on. Okay, and now a little bit of Monica in my life. Hi, Daniel. Are you going to say anything this time? Well, anything different? Oh, well, 
Sailor Moon says... Okay, well, yeah, I'm, I'm a little disappointed. I could have sworn that maybe she would have said something about, like, the fact that, you know, the poem writing similar to Yuri and all that. Okay, well, so here we are on the at the big decision maker, or the big decision making question. Who are we going to go with? Well, it's probably obvious. Well, I'd probably be most helpful helping out Yuri. Or, yeah, helping out Yuri. Me? No, the other Yuri. Or, no. Are you serious? Gee, I don't know. You're the one who makes it seem like you can't stand me. You were the one who, who was like, thank you, next, before I could even do anything. Why would you... Natsuki? I can already tell you're about to say something mean. But no. Yes. I was just saying... Ugh. Well, if you wanted me to go with you, you should have probably been a bit nicer to me and not go all Ariana Grande on me. So, you'll be helping Yuri then, Daniel. Or, so you'll be helping Yuri then, Daniel. Uh, well, I guess that's the only way you can read it. Yeah. If that's okay with you, Yuri. It, if that's okay with you, I mean. Uh, of course! Sorry, I have a habit of overthinking these sorts of things. Me too. Sometimes... It's like you overthink things and... You put too much thought into it and then all of a sudden it just kind of ends up backfiring in your face. Your, uh, your assistance will be much appreciated. Okay, well, that's sorted then. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? You bet, because she's a pro, and I'm just a hack. I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. How about you, Sayori? We can work together if you want. I think I'll be okay, thanks. What an independent bunch you all are. <laughs> so, is that everything we need to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? No. Well, excited may not be the right word. But I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. She glances shyly in my direction. I'm especially looking forward to spending more time with Daniel. Do you feel the same way, Daniel? Yes. I mean... <laughs> yeah. I haven't really made any banners before, and... I don't know much about aromatherapy, whatever that is. Haven't you ever played a Pokemon game? Amoongus, use aromatherapy! You know? Well, obviously we're not talking about the Pokemon move. So it'll be a new experience for me. I'm sorry in advance if I'm not very helpful, Yuri. Because I don't read books. No, no, there's nothing to worry about. I appreciate you offering to help me in the first place. Good to know. It'll be fun. This is where the fun begins. Yeah, that's the spirit, guys. That's the spirit. That's good enough for me. It's like, whatever, I'll take it. What about you, Natsuki? Uh, I'm just looking forward to making all those cupcakes. Those new students better appreciate them. Because if not, then I'll beat their asses. Although, you know, I guess Nasi does kind of strike me as the person that... Who knows, she is a hothead, but I don't know. You know what they say about small girls? They can be scrappers. I'm sure they will. Don't you worry. After all, they look just as nice as they taste. There's a general murmur of agreement. I have a little surprise in mind with the with the cupcakes that I think everyone will like. Oh, what would that be? It's a surprise, didn't you hear her? 
Nasuki rolls her eyes. Yeah. <laughs> it's called a surprise for a reason, dummy. Damn. She's a mad gal. Standing up to the club president like that. Well, no, she's not standing up to the president. She's... She's back-talking the club president. You'll find out on Monday. Uh, of course. How silly of me to forget. Oh, silly me. A spoon can't pick up a steak. Anyway, there's nothing more to discuss for today. Everyone knows what they're doing, so I'll see you all on Monday with your festival stuff. Oh, sorry, before I go, Sayori, anything you want to add? Sayori has been awfully quiet. If I wasn't so worried about her, I might have forgotten she was in the room. Hmm? No, I'm okay, thanks. I'm looking forward to what your little mystery is, Natsuki. As Natsuki and Monica leave, Sayori turns to Yuri and I. Oh. And Daniel, Yuri? What? I hope you two have fun. She's smiling on the outside, but she's crying a river on the inside. It's like that meme where the guy's wearing the mask that looks like a smug bastard face and then he's crying underneath it. Well, except Sayori isn't being a smug little jerk. She's just... She's just putting on a happy face so that no one has to worry about her, and... Anyways, she giggles as she walks out the door, only to start crying later. Hang on. We're meant to walk home together. Hold on. This operation was your idea. Okay, I just quoted Revenge of the Sith two times in a row. As I move forward to intercept her, I feel a light tap on my shoulder. It's Yuri looking incredibly sheepish. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you or anything. It's just, I realize we have no way of contacting each other this weekend. Oh, silly me. I forgot myself, actually. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Do you, uh, want my, no my mobile number? Who says mobile number anymore? Well, whatever. It's like, I know what it is, but I just hardly hear anyone ever say mobile number, mobile phone. I think that would be the best way, yes. Okay, here you go. We exchange numbers. As I add her name to my list of contacts, I realize how small my contact list actually is. Apart from Sayori and my parents, it's basically empty. A reminder of how life was before joining this club. Because then there was you. Everything went from wrong to right. And the stars lit up all the sky. Okay, I can't remember that song anyway, so... Your life has been spared of that song. Daniel? Huh? Sorry, I must have spaced out a little. I was thinking about this weird... Kylie Minogue song that's stuck in my head. It's okay. I was just saying I'll be stopping by on your house. <laughs> She's gonna stop by on the house. <laughs> Oops. I was just saying that I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. That's what happens when I read too fast. Or at least read through the words too fast. Huh? My house. My house. My house. I is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought it'd be, or I'd be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Ah, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to your house. Oh, yeah, I guess that's fine. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's like, you want to go to Yuri's house? You don't want to go to Yuri's house. Oh, hello. What the? I open my eyes and see that Yuri's house is bigger than I remember. It's like, th is this a surprise? No, the surprise is the lamppost. OK. 
Okay, no. Do you like it? Did you do this all by yourself? <laughs> holy... Holy damn, Yuri! I guess it's not really that important either way. I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. And maybe the rest of the house too, considering... Your room isn't the only room that's... She's probably going to see. I hope I can actually contribute to whatever you have in mind, Yuri. I hope I'm not useless. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Daniel. I think that we'll make a very productive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Yeah, I don't like people who only choose to talk to somebody or hell, even date somebody just because they feel sorry for the person. That's just the worst. Anyways. Wait! You don't actually think that, do you? Yeah, I'm not that much of a horrible... human being. I... don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. How about the other option? Because I love you! Or like you. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's simply what I want to do. And because I love you! But... Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Besides, you helped me a lot with Sayori earlier. I have to return the favor somehow. Uh, oh, you really don't have to worry about that. Huh, I'm only teasing. I'd love to help you out. I always enjoy your company. Oh? Uh? Her face flushes a bright crimson. Yep. Uh, there's no way you sincerely mean that. Of course I do. Of course. You're, del you're a delight to be around, Yuri. I, I see. Forgive me, Daniel. It's just, um... I rarely hear such kind things spoken to me. Spoken so genuinely. I really can't understand why anyone would say mean things about her. Just because she keeps to herself, or because her interests deviate a little from the norm? Regardless, I do want to spend my time, or spend my Sunday with you, Sayo. Er, ah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, don't do that. It's like, my mind was briefly thinking a bit about Sayori, and now, oops. Regardless, I really do want to spend my Sunday with you, Yuri. Well, Sayori, Yuri, I don't know. Can you believe me? Believe it! She looks me straight in the eyes, deep in thought. Look me in the eyes! It's almost as if I can see the gears turning in her head. After a brief moment, she sighs and nod, nods. Yes! I believe you! And believe in the Daniel that believes in you. I hope we can. Er, I hope that we have an exceptional time together, Daniel. Uh, I didn't mean for that to sound so serious. Why so serious? Ugh, I'm doing it again. Yuri clears her throat. What I wanted to say was, I'm looking forward to Sunday. A gentle smile plays across her face. Me too, Yuri. Me too. I leave the club room, Yuri following behind me. It looks like Sayori didn't wait up for me. She's probably at home by now. I can't help but feel guilty about not... Yeah, not walking home with her, but... Maybe she really does want to be left alone. It certainly... It certainly explained why she seemed to shrug off my attempts to help her, right? But I feel like something's off. I wish I could just focus on what's going on in front of me. And then nothing of any relative importance happened whatsoever. It's like, I can go back to saying that again. <laughs> I'll never get tired of this room. 
or Saitama. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, why is it Saitama? <laughs> and darn, I wish I could tell what this picture was. It's like, that's my family! And who's that? That's just my crazy uncle. It's already Sunday. I have been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Stop worrying so much. Now repeat after me. You will not get nervous. Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. Oh, wait. Clearly an introvert and... Okay. He didn't refer to himself as an introvert. That's what I thought. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try, just the two of us. You and I. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. Okay, how are Yuri's texts? She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. Oh. Well, this music is new. I peek out of my window and notice... A bug! Yuri? She's not supposed to be here for a little while. I wonder if this is Yuri's theme that I'm hearing. It's very peaceful and serene. And a bit classy as well. I go downstairs and open the front door. Ah! I was worried this was the wrong house. I probably should have asked about it earlier. Yeah, and I doubt you want to go knocking on everyone's door and asking, is Daniel at home, and they look at you like, huh? No, it's okay. You're a bit early, though. But that's alright. We can work with that. I'm glad I took the time to tidy things up before she arrived. If she arrived early and I, did, and I hadn't done anything, I would have been really embarrassed. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. I suppose I was just a bit anxious that I'd followed your directions wrong. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Ah, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decide to ignore it. I elected to ignore that. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Uh, well, I actually had a bit of trouble. Are we going to go on a shopping date? Is that so? Yuri had texted me a list of art supplies yesterday, and I was supposed to pick them up for today. But you didn't. You waited until the last minute. Just like in the other timeline. It probably works out better this way, since she'll be able to get exactly what she's looking for. I suppose that's one way of looking at it. Well, we should probably take some things from the art room at school. What? What are you suggesting? The, cl the school is closed. At least... It should be closed on a Sunday. Um, as long as I leave my things at your house first. I'd rather not carry them with me. Sure, no problem. What do you mean, I see a problem here? Well, maybe it's not a problem. I don't know. I quickly open up the front door to my house, and Yuri places her things just past it. That way, she'll see them as soon as we get back. Right then, shall we? The two of us briskly start walking to school. The weather is beautiful, and a light breeze blows throughout the streets. Yuri is rather quiet, but she doesn't seem to be annoyed. Unlike another someone, I've come to learn that she tends to appreciate things from afar, so her silence isn't too worrying. Man, it's almost like, is this just the Be Me to Natsuki episode? It's odd being at school on the weekend. 
Yes, why... how? The mood of the place feels totally different without the crowds of students around. Well, at least they're doing this in the daytime and not doing this at night. Yuri leads me down a long corridor until we reach a large imposing door. I don't know, well maybe it's different. This should be it. With a single or er, with a slight creak, she opens the door and heads inside. Oh, nice. The smell of dried paint lingers in the air. While not terribly large, this place should have what we're looking for. Okay, we'll need a large cloth banner and some paints. Do you have brushes already? I think so. It couldn't hurt to get some more, though. We are going to return this stuff later, right? Yuri strides through the classroom, a, t a determined look on her face. It's a quite stunning contrast to how she usually appears. I kind of like it. Like I said, I know what he's into now. She bends down and pulls a long, thick sheet of fabric from a shelf down below. With a surprising haste, she folds it up into a neat bundle and tucks it under her arm. Y you know, Daniel? Yeah? I... well... She closes her eyes, taking a quick breath. I love you! What? I know we haven't even started yet, but this is nice. We're doing something so simple together, yet it feels so enrapturing. Uh huh? Me don't understand big words. That's... Oh, he did understand. Okay. That's a bit forward, isn't it? Well, hey, you wanted to see her be more aggressive, right? Yuri seems to think so, too, as her face flushes. Uh, uh, I, I didn't mean for that to sound so serious. Oh, we're not even decorating yet, and I'm already brewing things. She retreats into the deep purple shroud of her hair, fidgeting with a loose strand. Now, this is the Yuri I'm more accustomed to. Yuri, I thought we went over this. You don't have to worry about that. I know that's just your way of expressing how excited you are to start working on our part of the festival. And I'm excited too! Uh, okay, if that's how you really feel. It is. She nervously scans the shelves, picking out the various different paints we'll need. In the end, we spent a bit more time than I was expecting here. It seems Yuri really pays attention to the quality of what she wants. She knows what she wants. But if it'll make things go well with Yuri today, I don't mind. Right, shall we get back to my place and get started on this? Yes, we should have everything we need now. Once we arrive back at my house, I unlock the door and guide her up to my bedroom. There should be enough space for us to work on the banner up there. As soon as I open the door, Yuri wanders around my room curiously. Daniel, your house is remarkably tidy. <laughs> Funny you should say that. <laughs> oh, he had the same reaction. I cleaned it up before you came over, so... Well but he admitted to it. Uh, oh, you didn't have to do that just for me. He did, because he's trying to impress you. Uh, no. I would be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. I see. That makes sense. After all, a clear room makes a clear mind, does it not? Cleaning may be... or er, cleaning can be very therapeutic. I would also... I would have been more than happy to have helped you. Funny. Please, what kind of host would I be if I left this... left this place a tip? What? Is that some kind of slang for a mess? Besides, I'd like to know where everything is in my room. Everything has its own place, you know? Organized chaos. Yuri nods and walks over to my desk. She carefully studies the various collectibles I have set up on it. 
No, don't look at my Sailor Moon action figures. Suddenly, she reaches down and... No! Wait, don't look in there! <laughs> oh, wait. Okay, no. This didn't happen with Natsuki's route, because we didn't even see the bedroom. I snatched Sherry's wrist, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Ah! Uh, uh, do forgive me, Daniel. Uh, I shouldn't be poking around the property of others. I don't know why I did that. It's okay. I just... Well, never mind. I'm glad I managed to catch her before she got a look... A chance to look inside. There's things in there that I'm not really comfortable sharing with others. Yup. Well. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She starts fidgeting with her hands, gently squeezing them. So, what did you have planned, Yuri? Ah. Uh, yes. I thought about some way we could transform the club room. With the right atmosphere pieces, we could morph the world into our own citadel of Scansion, our domain of Declen Declension, our... Ah, um... Yeah, it's like, well, at least half of those words I haven't heard of before. So, it's like, you mind elaborating on that just a little bit? Yuri blushes. Perhaps she got... Or perhaps she feels as though she got a bit carried away. That sounds ambitious. What kinds of atmospheric pieces were you thinking of? Well, even something as simple as adjusting the lighting or employing aromatherapy could be wonderful. Wow. I'm impressed, Yuri. You've really put a lot of thought into, into this. It's nothing, really. I was just hoping that I can make our recital an event that plucks at the soul. Though our word, uh, through our words, our visitors can experience our struggles and strife vicariously. That sounds intense. Yeah, when you put it that way. Ah! Intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? It depends, I suppose. No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. I is that so? That makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax. Relax. Don't do it. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a cylindrical wooden object and places it on my desk. I thought about covering the windows up and having small candles provide the room's illumination. I think it would make our event much more of an intimate affair. Don't you agree? Uh, yeah. The way Yuri worded it sounded a bit forward, doesn't it? Yeah, the the part about the intimate... Uh, what was that again? An intimate affair. Like, well, if you just take intimate affair on its own out of context, it's like, yeah, what does that make you think of? <laughs> I'm just saying. See, I choose not to press it, to press it though. What's that wooden thing though? Oh, it's an oil diffuser. It's actually my personal one from home. Tell me, Daniel, how much do you know about aromatherapy? Absolutely nothing. Not as much as I'd like to. <laughs> ah, well, let me tell you about it a little. I believe the scent of an area can completely alter how we perceive it. Being able to alter the aura of the room like that, there's something magical about it. Yuri opens up a little, and opens it up. Well, she is opening up a little bit, but... Yuri opens it up and retrieves a tiny glass bottle from her bag 
inside a bigger plastic one filled with water. She empties the larger bottle into the diffuser, then uncaps the tiny bottle and adds a few drops to it, then pushes a button. Within seconds, a delightful smelling mist delicately floats out of it. Wow, this smells wonderful. What was the stuff you were adding to it? The scent oils. Okay, well, yeah. Ah, it's my favorite essential oil. It's derived from the jasmine flower. And as I established in uh, whatever video it was, yeah, there are some implications of what the jasmine flower and the jasmine scent are supposed to represent. It has a beautiful, alluring scent. Wouldn't you agree? It really does smell nice. Was there a particular reason you chose it? Uh, well, it's true that jasmine oil, that jasmine can aid relaxation. It has various other properties. Yeah. That I only found out about through Reddit. It can enhance your emotions and stir the mind. And what might simply be curiosity can grow into enrapturing awe and wonder. A mild interest can blossom into an exciting infatuation. Yes, there we go. Well, see, that's... That was pretty much what the dictionary or whatever it said about jasmine oil right there. Basically, it can kind of make you feel a little frisky, to, for a lack of better words. Also, funny. Some would describe it as an aphrodisiac, but I think it has more to do with warm feelings it can give you. You're drawn in, your heart pounding along with the world around you, your heart going doki doki. Doesn't that sound... Oh goodness. Poltritudinous. Poltritudinous, Daniel? Dang it, funny lady. It's like, I actually had to like... Say like, hold on, what is this word? And sound it out. It's like I'm back in first grade all over again. I need some hooked on phonics right now. Ah, yeah, I think that'd be perfect. What does that word mean? <laughs> okay, so he doesn't know either. I'm not sure what that word means, but based on her reaction, it must mean something good. We can only hope. You're quite an expert on this, aren't you? I'll trust your judgment. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself so happy. Then she again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different kanji character on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. What? Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the kanji paper onto the ribbons to create a, curtain, a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Isn't it beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you'd put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. You know the way... The way I read it and the way it kind of sounds in my mind? It kind of sounds like Muffy from Harvest Moon. <laughs> yeah, like that. Okay, so I guess that's how Muffy laughs. Is it just me, or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? 
Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Or maybe it's the jasmine oil. Here's your marker, Daniel. You can write any character you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Oh, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Uh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. It's a little fancy. Ah! Uh -uh. Well... Embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason. I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know. Yeah, that's kind of what I say. If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. All right. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. So kind of like supposedly. I remember this documentary about Angelina Jolie being into collecting knives, but I don't know how much truth there is to that, because, well, I just never really... This was a long time ago, and I just never really thought to follow up on... Like, oh my god, I have to research this topic right now. They're just so pretty. Uh, I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship... And the feeling of danger, maybe? Uh-oh. What? Uh, what am I saying? Yeah, what... What exactly are you saying, especially about the danger? Please don't think I'm weird for this. Uh, <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm laughing with you. No, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing next to you. Or with you. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. Well, she is the funny lady. It's... Well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. It suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> Today's episode has been brought to you by the word intense. Besides... It's a really cool-looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife, with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. Look at me, I'm Errol Flynn! Okay, no. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? You call that a knife? This is a knife. That's not a knife, that's a spoon. Curious of its sharpness, I, f I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ah! Oh. Daniel! Why did you do that? I don't know! I'm just weird! I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. No. I should have warned you. Remember, knives are sharp and pointy. Don't touch it. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. That's... She stares at it and noticeably fidgets. Where do you keep your first aid kit? You'll need to sterilize the wound, then wrap it to halt the blood flow. Do you have gauze? It should... I raise my hand, cutting Yuri off. Yuri, I don't think it's that serious. I'm not going to die from this. I probably 
just need a bandage. Yuri's pupils narrow, perhaps afraid that she went too far. But I appreciate your concern. Will you be okay for a little while? Uh, oh. I yes, of course. Just don't look through the secret drawer. I quickly run to the kitchen and rinse the cut, then apply a small plaster. It stings a little, but that should be the worst of it. As I return, Yuri's eyes dart around the room, as though she were too embarrassed to look at me. You didn't look in the drawer, did you? Because there are things that no one should ever see in that drawer. I don't know what they are. Well, I kind of do, but still. I... I went overboard there. I I'm sorry if I made things awkward. I just... Yuri hangs her head shamefully. Yuri. Uh, I... My parents were doctors, so I always tend to jump to the most severe conclusions when it came to personal injury. Okay, we're getting some backstory here. Her parents are doctors. Interesting. I never know how to read the situation. Uh, I'm s sorry for making you feel so out of place. In your own home, no less. Uh. Yuri. She's way too harsh on herself. How can I fix this? It's really okay. Your heart was in the right place. She doesn't look up. I appreciate that you were concerned about me, but I'm fine, see? It was only a little nick. Or, it was only a tiny nick. It's my fault, anyway, for being so careless with your knife. Yeah. Because he clearly didn't remember, Oh yeah, I should touch the sharp part. I wonder what will happen. I, I see. The panic in her eyes evaporates, replaced by a calming stillness. Seeing her ease up a bit is reassuring. Maybe the oil diffuser is helping. Yeah, that's what I've been saying. Uh, thank you for being patient with me, Daniel. Yuri giggles shyly. That was really cute. I was definitely not expecting it. My face grows hot. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, no worries. I clear my throat. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the kanji. After we have finished attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected and seems like it'll be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great! Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Ah, oh, thanks! It's going to look wonderful, isn't it? Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. Nothing to it but to do it. What do you have in mind? Well, remember the paint and the banner? I'd like to make something with that. Something to display in the club room. Ah, oh, that's right. Yuri had made a big deal about fetching the banner from the art room. She must have been looking forward to this. I've been looking forward to this. Okay. Uh... Could you retrieve the paint and brushes from the other room? I can stay here and unravel the banner. What was with that pause? You're not going to try to to look through the drawer again, are you? Yeah, sure. I'll be right back. Thank you very much. No problem, funny lady. I head downstairs and pick up the bag filled with acrylic paints. There's mixing palettes and several different colors. I stop to fill up a couple of cups of a couple of, of cups with water for diluting the brushes afterwards. Then go back upstairs. Yuri? Ah, uh, Daniel? No, I wasn't looking at your secret drawer. As I open the drawer, Yuri is hurriedly rolling her sleeve over her arm. It begins. Uh, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Uh, no, not at all. 
There's nothing wrong, so... As far as we know. Let's get to work. I can't shake the feeling that there's something she's not telling me, but I don't push the point further. So, I think if we did a color gradient across the banner, it would look wonderful. Starting with warm colors, then blending them into darker shades? I thought a day-to-night cycle would be really pretty. You mean like the day-to-night cycle I see on the screen where I'm like, and nothing of any relative importance happened whatsoever. Like that? Once it's finished, we could write something inspirational across it. We can hang it on the wall, behind the podium, at the front of the classroom. Ah, neat. What are you... what are you gonna write? Well... It would be more fun to surprise you. Surprise? Yuri smiles at me. Again with the surprises. If you say so. I kneel down on the opposite side of the banners, Yuri. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like the art class projects we had back then. So, okay, acrylic paint, watercolor paint, I don't know. It's relaxing. Ah, if this is too immature for you, then I'm sorry. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah. I suppose it is. I'm glad you feel that way, Daniel. Yuri places her brush down, pondering to herself. Most people our age want to do wild things. Yep. But I'm usually more comfortable doing something soothing. It's like your Friday night versus my Friday night. Your Friday night might consist of going out to... Well... Ignoring the fact that they're high schoolers, let's pretend that they're college students for a moment. Going out partying and getting hammered and just trying to rock the casball. Versus my Friday night would probably be... Well, <laughs> ironically, I'm recording this on a Friday night, so... Something like this! This is my Friday night! <laughs> I'm quite content with just a bit of company. Even if it's something simple, like reading, we don't need to be talking a lot. Just having a friend next to me or, yeah, makes me feel... makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games, where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. Which is more or less pretty much one of the driving forces of this channel. I'm sharing my experiences for a sense of expression and happiness, so to say, as well as to share that experience with someone else and to maybe hope to invoke some kind of emotions or feelings. Hopefully positive ones. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush. But I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Oops. Ah! Uh, sorry! Yuri reels back and quickly lifts my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? Uh, uh, I don't think so. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, oh, your face. Your beautiful face! There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. I've ruined her beautiful face! Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel. Then I dampen it with hot water, 
And don't look in that drawer! I return to my room and kneel back down in front of her. Okay. This wonderful scene again. Here. I pat Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Ah. Is something wrong? Or, ah. It's warm. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand. But Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. No! Uh, hold on a moment. Uh-huh. Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Uh. I keep my hand still against Yuri's cheek. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Okay, yeah, so today's secret word is an intense. Not every time intense. Almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? I don't know. Well, actually, yes, I do know. You're falling in love, and the jasmine oil is only helping that. Yeah. <laughs> is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist, send a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly, her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Ah. Uh, Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. Uh, it's fine. Everything's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again. And we never talk about this ever again. Or do we? But her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore th the event that just transpired. I hesitantly remove my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. That ought to do it. I finish filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Uh, not quite yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here, then have you bring it in the morning. Or bring it in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. Funny. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Who? <laughs> You say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? No, funny lady, you were right. In fact, you might say he was enjoying himself a bit too much. Uh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Oh no. Ah. Oh. So you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we would have an extra have extra time after finishing the work. Well Yuri thinks to herself. I I think it would be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there were, would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. You know, because he grabbed the knife and... <laughs> he pretty much started this chain of events. Sorry for being such a slow worker. And for starting off a chain of events. 
No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So... I shouldn't be disappointed, or anything. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. Because she doesn't want to leave. I understand why. It sounds like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. Exactly, so it's like, it makes her happy, and well, she's clearly sad that, well, now, in a sense, time's up and she has to leave. And basically go back to being alone. But that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out to the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then, Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. What? I say that kind of thing without thinking. If I let you walk out of that door, you'll walk out of my life. And my life was meaningless. It was but a whisper until you entered it. And, yeah. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Because we can do this again. We can do this again sometime. Whenever you want, you can come on, you can come over, or we can go out somewhere. Totally not on a date. Uh, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simple sm oh, simply smiles bashfully. It's like now he's, he's acting all flustered and embarrassed. A anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Daniel. Yuri takes a step closer to me and briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you. But well, how am I supposed to respond to that? See you in chemistry! Oh wait, but there are no classes tomorrow. Darn it! I don't want to make things awkward, but... Uh, I... I would like to spend more time with you as well, Daniel. She takes a slow, deep breath and releases my hand. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Y yeah, I'll see you at the festival. With one last smile, Yuri starts to head home. She looks back over her shoulder, but then quickly turns back around. I'm really grateful that I got to do this with Yuri. I enjoyed my time with her a lot. The way she said she simply enjoys having company, I understand exactly what she means. Tomorrow's going to be incredible. I just know it. Well, it's gonna be quite an unforgettable moment for all five of you, that's for sure. You might even say that you guys will be talking for talking about it for a long time to come. Okay, and then nothing of any relative importance happened whatsoever. Although considering how long this video is, and well, Considering I just did not want to stop in an awkward spot, I just could not bring myself to to uh, just stop in the middle of anything, so... Uh, uh, no, not that. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I guess I don't, I don't need that anymore. Okay, well then... Yeah, so I guess thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time with whatever else I do. Sorry about the long video. Stay golden, and later, folks.